Well, with the coronavirus keeping schools closed across the country, parents, teachers, and students are transitioning to virtual learning. Florida, in particular, is receiving high praise for its success with distance learning. I want to bring in Florida State Senator and Chair of the Education Committee, Manny Diaz Jr. for more on the state's efforts. Hi, Manny. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, Greta. Thanks for having us, and it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here to talk about Florida's success. How is the Florida Department of Education helping the 2.7 million students in your state be able to learn from home? Well, we have a, a, a multiple uh, approach where we have uh, distributed about 32,500 devices to more rural areas. Uh, and we also um, have uh, Florida Virtual School, which has expanded its capacity. We're actually serving students in Alaska right now because Florida's uh, Virtual School has the capacity to export some of its services. And uh, so a lot of our districts have distributed, like for example, in South Florida, Miami-Dade, they distributed 80,000 devices to try to get students online. And so within a couple of days, most of our school districts were able to get flip that switch and get students going virtually. Or in some cases, some of the more rural districts may have done some distance learning using packets that were picked up by parents. But the majority of the state moved uh, quickly to online learning. And this. I credit this to the fact that we, for over 15 years, we've been uh, exploring virtual education in our state. You talk about the devices that have been sent to students in the state, but one big issue that has been raised with distance learning, not just in Florida, but all across the country, is those who don't have access to internet. How is the state of Florida helping those students in particular? That's correct, and that's an issue. We, we have some rural counties where there's only, there may be one cell phone tower in the whole county. Uh, and, and that's a challenge that has to be overcome. And what we've been able to do with some of that is um, using these distance learning packets that have been distributed in a drive through format to get those students to be able to have the materials and then have the teachers contacting the students uh, via phone sometimes to be able to assist with that. So that there's still some areas of the state where we have to overcome some of those challenges. But I think if you look at uh, percentage wise, Florida, which is almost 22 million people, the ability for us to have uh, given access to the majority of our students is uh, leaps and bounds to a lot uh, what a lot of other states have been able to do. Florida could definitely be seen as a success for this type of program and possibly a model for the rest of the country though. What has been the response from parents and teachers specifically across the state as they try to navigate this new program? You know a lot of teachers have had experience with virtual learning because in Florida we have a virtual learning requirement of one course a year. We have a good amount of our uh, teachers that have had some experience with it. A, a lot of parents have also had experience with it, including with the Florida Virtual School. Um, a lot of other parents are dealing with the fact uh, that they're uh, at home with their students for the first time and have not only man their own jobs, but also act as kind of the, the teacher in the classroom in, uh, present in their rooms or in their, uh, in their family rooms teaching their students. So there's a mixed response from the actual modality of, of, of learning online in the conditions we're in. It's everybody's kind of trying to do this from home in some places. Like my own house, we have four devices going. Some We have the kids on school. My wife is doing uh, her work and I'm trying to either do interviews or trying to uh, attend to my day job. And so that presents a challenge. So I think it's mixed results. Um, some folks are just not used to it. Last week, Governor Ron DeSantis said classes could possibly be back in session by May. How realistic do you think that is for a timeline, or should we expect Florida schools to be closed until the fall? So I, I think that uh, that that aspiration is to try to get the economy open again and have kids return to a regular, normal uh, structure. But I think what's working against us for that is just timing. You know, the school year ends early June or end of May districts in Florida. And so to go back at the beginning of May is going to present a logistical challenge that's just not worth it. Now, there may be some of the counties in the state, uh, more rural areas where it may be feasible, uh, but we're going to have to deal with some of the issues of social distancing on a school bus, for example, or on a lunch line. So I think that, you know, I, I get what the governor's trying to do is trying to uh, move us back to a normalcy. And part of that is having kids in school. But I just think there's just going to be parts of the state where it's not going to be feasible either due to the large number of infections or just the logistical turnaround with the time that's left. All right, Florida State Senator Manny Diaz Jr. joining us to talk about uh, the state's efforts and success with facilitating distance learning amid school shutdowns across the state. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you, Greta. Stay safe. You as well. Want to see more videos like this? 
Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.